Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of As the Crow Flies Hiking. So I have with me today Side Trail Adventures, awesome. And then on my left, your right, is Leonidas on the trail. Hey. So we're hiking part one of the Mountain to Sea Trail today. And it's been raining all day. So we had to deal with that as it came about throughout the day, rain on, rain off, and things like that. And we started talking about what can be done or what kind of thoughts or tips can be done about backpacking in the rain. So I thought I would ask these guys that are pretty good at this stuff, what kind of things do they do to prepare for hiking in the rain? So let's get into it. I'm gonna start with Leonidas on the trail and ask him what are some of the tips that you do for preparing to hike in the rain? Well, first off, I think it's always good to have sufficient gear for the rain because you don't know, especially with, depending where you're at, the temperature variables. You know, if you're out in the summertime and it's really warm, and a lot of times, you know, you may not need rain gear. It's nice to have a rain jacket or something, you know, in case it's windy. But, you know, now like it is here where, you know, today it was in the, I think the low was maybe in the 50s, but then you know, we're dropping into the 30s potentially this weekend. Rain gear is really essential because you can get hypothermia without it. I mean, I've been on a trip where, you know, it was 40 degrees and I decided not to put a rain jacket on, just put part of my rain gear on. And I got so cold that I couldn't stop long enough to put my rain gear on. So you really need to be aware of the temperature, kind of aware of, you know, how wet you're getting and be prepared to put on rain gear before maybe you really need to put it on because it's a lot better to be warm and wet than it is to be cold and wet. Yeah. And you know, I was thinking about that today in relation to water shoes. All of us have water shoes for this trip. I have these, uh, Sequay, uh, water shoes that I have. They're for kayaking and other things, but Austin, do you use water shoes? Um, yeah, so I, I, my camp shoes kind of double as water shoes. I've got Crocs. Um, I also have um, some, some similar uh, kayaking shoes as well. Um, they're not as hiking friendly. Um, but when uh, Leonidas was talking about uh, putting on gear, uh, the other thing that just occurred to me as he was saying that was don't be afraid to take it off too. Right. Um, yeah. Because there is just as much as it, you know, being too cold, being too hot can be a bad thing too where right. you can overheat. Um, so just because it's raining doesn't mean you have to have it on. Sometimes, I mean, we, so today, uh, we had it on for most of the day, but then, um, it started warming up a little bit. We got down into this valley, uh, and most of us shed the gear, even though it continued to rain, we just kind of walked through it. Um, so it's some, sometimes it's okay to take the rain, the, the gear off. Um, it's okay to be wet. Um, none of us, none of us melted. So that was good. Well, no. I almost <laughs> did, but whatever <laughs> it was it was pretty wet all day long yeah uh, but I, I agree like today when I um, when I started getting hot I could feel myself sweating through my rain stuff it was getting uh, real humid in summer and I was just ready to take it off so we got to the stream and I took it off but what I didn't do and I thought I would do because we talked about this Leonidas right. is I thought I would take my shoes off and put my water shoes on and go across a stream that was up almost, well, it was past my knees. And I didn't because my shoes were so grimy and dirty, I kind of wanted them to. And wet. And wet. I mean, right, you know. So at that point, I didn't need to. So I don't even know if I needed the shoes for for, for the stream crossings, but I, I need them right now for camp shoes because my shoes are so wet, I don't want to put those on. Um, so th I think that's that's an idea to think about. What else you got? What else you got, Austin? Um, I know that like for, I know there are lots of people. So my brother came on the trip with us. Um, he wears rain pants. I don't. Um, I just choose not to. Um, so it, it really you kind of. I hate using the hike your own hike thing, but mm -hmm. sometimes you got to figure out what works for you. Right. <clears throat> right. Because uh, for me, it's just not important to me to keep my lower torso or my lo the lower portion of my body wet or dry. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, Does that change for you based on temperature outside? I think if, I mean, if, if this was another, you know, at below freezing, absolutely, yeah. yeah I think that, that changes things. Um, but but for, you know, for reference, it's about 70s, low, mid, mid 60s maybe. 
for highs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's we're starting to get into fall weather. So um, for for so Leonidas is right. So like winter camping, if you're going to be out um, in the rain, uh, it's a, that's a safety issue at that point. Yeah. Because right. um, cold and wet is not a good combination. Um, but yeah, for general use, uh, I usually won't wear uh, pants or um, I know you've got the, the kilt. Right. Um, but you know, it's just a matter of preference. But you, it's always good to have something. You know, the uh, none of us ever choose to hike in the rain. Today, just it happened to rain. It happened. Um, yeah. But I always bring my gear, my rain gear, on every trip, even if I know 100% it's not going to rain. That thing is still in my pack somehow, just because you never know. You don't want to be out there without it. Yeah, and I was thinking about um, my thoughts on this today. Came back to over the summer, we had a lot of rain, and I, I got wet in different trips, and so I just decided I'm going to bring something to sleep in that's dry. Because I knew there was going to be a lot of rain, and that's the summer, and, and I think it's even more important, like they said, in the winter to have some sleeping pants or something. Because if you get them wet, and then you're not going to want to sleep in them, and that's what I did. I went on one trip. I got wet during the day. I didn't have any really thing to sleep in at night, so I just kind of stayed wet and miserable. But it really, like you said, becomes <clears throat> a safety issue in the winter if you don't have something to, to change into to sleep in, right? Or, you know, if you're having to get in something wet, and you've got a down bag, yeah. then all that moisture is transferring into the down, so that's not good either, so. Yeah, I think that's important. And we didn't talk about Leonidas's kilt, but you wear a kilt, right? And, but typically you don't wear uh, long pants unless right. it's really cold, right? It has to be probably in the 30s for me. I don't actually wear pants, I'll wear tights under my shorts, and then I can kind of take them on or off based on the temperature or how much exertion but I actually use a pair of summer weight like Under Armour heat gear which are not technically for cold but I run so hot that if I wear the cold gear I sweat in them and then that's even worse yeah so it's just you have to know yourself and how when you're exerting yourself how hot you're getting and be be willing to stop um, you know and change out take stuff off put stuff on you know and that's why I like layering systems as well rather than just saying I've got this puffy with a hood I bring a beanie and my rain jacket has a hood and then I've got a down beanie to sleep in because I can control my temperature yeah, by taking yeah. a hat on or putting mm -hmm. something on or putting gloves on or putting the liners over the gloves you can really fine-tune for the temperature that way so that you can kind of do your best to not get hot enough to where you're wetting out your stuff so yeah the, the other thing i was going to talk about and i'll ask austin about is your actual backpack so i think we have different theories of what you should do and and if anything you should take away from this it is that you have to do what's best for you you have to hike your own hike and figure out your own thing these are just simply thoughts or suggestions about this i don't ever claim to be an expert about any of this it's just stuff that's worked for me but i was going to ask austin what do you do for your backpack, you have an outer cover, right? For your, yeah. So um, it's one thing. So the way I look at it is one thing for me to be wet because I can, I can change clothes, I can dry off whatever it is I need to do. But if your gear is wet, that is a that ruins your trip very quickly. Right. Um, and so for me, I carry um, the Granite Gear Crown Two. Uh, that's a new pack for me. Uh, so, and because I don't like wet gear, um, so I've got a Nyla Flume uh, pack liner. So everything that goes in the bag goes into that pack liner. Uh, and then in addition to that, on the outside, I, I have a pack cover um, just because I don't want to take any chances. Uh, and so when we got here today, even though it rained all day, everything in, inside my pack was dry. So there wasn't any issues. Um, so it's just a matter of, of that layering system. I know you had talked about um, how your liner had helped you today. Yeah. So I've got an arc blast like Crow just got, but because I keep a bear canister on top of mine, it actually allowed some water to get in my arc blast, which, you know, it's taped seams, it's technically waterproof, but I still use a liner because you never know. And, you know, the Nile Foom liner, it's literally an ounce or less. Yeah. I've bought them sometimes, they're 25 ounces. The <laughs> last ones I bought were 28, or not ounces, grams. But for that, that little bit of weight for that insurance to know that your stuff's gonna be dry, it's, you can't, you can't, you know, an ounce is not a big deal. 
and that's yeah. and that was my first time using one today. Uh, Leonidas gave me that, and I had some stuff just kind of laying around in my pack. So I, the stuff that I wanted dry, I put it in that, rolled it up, folded it down like he showed me, and that worked well today because I did not have a pack cover on top, but I had that, and uh, everything stayed dry in it. Um, the other thing, the last thing that I really want to talk about, unless y'all have some other tips as we as we conclude, would be dealing with your tent or hammock. Mm. I know Austin does a hammock system. Uh, Leonidas and I both have the Z-Packs. So let me ask about the hammock first and then Leonidas to talk about what he does with his duplex as far as condensation and wetness. But Austin, what do you do with your hammock? So the nice thing with the hammock is uh, like my, my tarp has doors. So if I choose to, I can kind of close it in. Um, but for the most part, I get pretty good ventilation uh, underneath there. Uh, and then uh, at, you know, in the mornings, it wet, like, to, like it's supposed to rain tonight, so I'm planning on having a wet tarp in the morning, um, just wiping it off. Um, but then I've got a, just a screen net over my hammock. Um, but I've never had any issues with condensation or anything like that. Because right. you got that but, airflow. Yeah. 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 But for us, the, the duplex, we have to deal sometimes with condensation, so I'll, Lee and I will let you talk kind of about what you do. And it, you had a okay. great tip today for me, and it right. helped, yeah. <clears throat> so, first off, what I do, I actually got it from Huck. I bring those little plastic clothespins so I can not have both yeah. doors all the way closed. Because you've got to keep the condensation down, you have to have airflow. Now, last night, unfortunately, I guess, we'll say unfortunately, it was a nice campground, but there was no, no breeze in there whatsoever, so even with the doors propped with it raining, I still ended up with a decent amount of condensation in the tent just because if you don't have wind to, to transfer that moisture out, there's not a whole lot you can do and you can't just have the doors wide open when it's pouring down rain either. So, but I have a little pack towel that I use and I've even used that in the middle of the night if I've needed to, if certain condensation gets a little too heavy, I'll just wipe down the area over my head and then wring it out the door and then that usually works pretty well, but I do the same thing. Usually before I pack up, I'll wipe the whole thing down inside and I'll just keep wringing that little towel out over and over until I get it as dry as I can. If I have to set, you know, take it down wet if there's not, if it's not sunny or if I leave too early or if it's just too damp. And then, you know, what we were hoping to get here and we did somewhat is just, if you can get to camp in time and you can get some sun or a good breeze, you can set it up, open all the doors, wipe everything down again, because you are gonna have moisture in there from putting it up damp back in the bag. And then you just wipe it down again. And then generally with the breeze, it'll just it dry. pretty much dry everything out and you're ready to go, so. Yeah, and he gave me one of those today mm -hmm. and uh, it works so well, it's like a chamois. I was able to just wring it out and then go back through the bottom because uh, obviously last night the tent got wet. When I folded it all up, everything was wet. I put it back up took that chamois, wiped everything on the floor down so it got it dry and it worked really well. So that's our kind of thoughts about the, the tent and the, you know, putting it up, taking it down and, and condensation. Any last thoughts from either Leonidas or Side Trail about, um, you know, rain or hiking in rain? It just kind of stinks to tell you the truth. For me, it does. It just, it adds a whole mm. layer of stress that I'm not used to, it, or not really not used to, but it's just, it's just uh, another layer of stress of, should I bring this? Should I not bring this? Is, am I bringing my pack weight too high? Uh, you know, am I just bulking up my pack? So for me, it's just a layer of stress. Anything from y'all, final thoughts? I, I'll go, actually, I'll go counterpoint on that. Um, don't let the rain uh, keep you from going outside. Right, yeah. Um, the, you know, there's, sure, there, there are things that you need to do in order to do it correctly and do it safely, um, but don't let the rain uh, stop you from going outside and enjoying because that shuts you off from a lot. Right. We, we made the, the comment today that, um, you know, just just as the rain let up and we were able to look out on the mountains, um, there's nothing like seeing the mountains right after a rainstorm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's something you'd, you'd miss on a bright sunny day. You just wouldn't see it. Um, so don't be afraid to get wet. Don't be afraid to go out in the rain. Just do it right. Do it safe. Yeah. But, yeah. Lee and I, any final thoughts? I was something similar, you know, I mean, if you try to plan everything around the hope that you're never going to get rain, you're going to miss a lot of good trips. I mean, I've had trips where, I don't know, my mentality has always been, it's different when it rains when you're already on the trip. It's, it's just different mentally than it is 
getting out of the car to start the trip and it's pouring down rain. Yeah. There's just, yeah, it's a totally different thing mentally, even though it's really the same thing in your mind. It's like, why am I doing this? Yeah, a little bit of a gut check. Yeah. Yeah. You you're know, like, and, I just didn't, I, I know it said it was going to maybe rain, but I, I was kind of hoping with I mean, all We've home. even had a shuttle driver like, are you guys sure? I can just take you back into town and bring you back tomorrow. You know, and we're like, yeah. no, we really need to, to go. And I mean, that trip actually, we got out, it rained for maybe an hour. And then after that, it came out, sun came out. It was beautiful. And it was beautiful the rest of the trip. So if we had been like, right. well, let's uh, go back. No, nah. I mean, it just, yeah. And I, you know. and both of your points, like I think some of the best sunsets and sunrise are after mm -hmm. a rain. So anyway, that's uh, the edition of As the Crow Flies Hiking for today. I hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it. If you did, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and hit the like button and all those things that you're supposed to do, whatever. But anyway, I appreciate it. And I would ask you to look at subscribing to Side Trail Adventures and his channel. Uh, I've been able to hike with him uh, this, this week, and it's been great, and a really cool guy, Austin, and subscribe to uh, Leonidas on the Trail and his channel, and thank you y'all so much for agreeing to do this. I was just kind of spur of the moment, but I think there are some great tips from these guys about hiking in the rain. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Like I told Jay then the other day, the shorter your shorts are, the less shorts you got to get wet. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all you need to know. That's tip number six. That's right. Tip number six. <laughs>